It's Tiffany here. Welcome to My Quilting Life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where I inspire you to sew on a Sunday. Well, it doesn't have to be Sunday. Like I said, every video, it could be any day of the week, just one day a week, 30 minutes a day. Whatever time you have to sit down and sew, I'm hoping that I'm inspiring you to do so. <laughs> Let's see who's all here real quickly. Like, we got Ellen, Mary, Nadine, Kim, Delia. Uh, practically creative, which is Melissa. Uh, let's see, let's see. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Polly, Melina, uh, Michelle, or no, Marcel. Okay, sorry, I'm reading that wrong. Ella, uh, D Damali is here. Nancy is here. Maggie, Nita, the other Nancy. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Uh, we got Linda, Teresa, the other Teresa, Larry, Pauline, I'm going to QuiltCon already ready to go. I am, same as you. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Heather is here, Judy's here, Paula, Christy. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm looking, I'm looking, Gloria. If I skipped your name, I'm very sorry, Lorraine. Uh, Tammy, Lisa. Kathy, Sylvia, around to it. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, around to it. MJ, Karen, Brenda, Reen, Glenny, Peg Trella, Trella. I don't know how to say it. All right. And then. Uh, Jill, Debbie, Feisty Lady, Jennifer, Robin, Sylvia, Kathy D, uh, another Michelle, Jamie, M. Robert, Laura, Terry, Carrie, Maxi Doodle, Scrunchins, um, Callie Gal, Diane, Marianne, Linda, Robin, Eva, Darlene, Beverly, March, Crystal, Patricia, another Patricia, Janice, Linda, Cherie, Sandra, and Becky. Hey, hey, everybody. And if I've missed your name, I'm sorry. Hello. I was trying to go through that fast, but the keyboard just keeps moving and moving. So today I decided because I was cleaning up a little bit of fabric in my room, I, I was like, you know, wasn't really cleaning up fabric. I was more like pulling out some fabric. And the only way to pull out that fabric was to clean up the stack of fabric. <laughs> that, that was like not really stacked on my floor. It literally was dumped on the floor behind the camera where you guys can't see the disaster. So now it's a little cleaned up and I can walk in about, you know, one foot. <laughs> but behind me, I've been pulling my brother machine out and I had this big stack of junk back here. I can't say junk because it was good stuff. It's just been, I've been throwing everything back here behind me while I'm doing things. And then um, about six or so months ago, I put these blocks back there and they were buried, buried, like everything was buried, but I needed the brother machine for my current video that I'm still filming. I pulled it out and I was like, you know what? I should just clean this up. So I decided today should be the day I finally do something with these blocks. So what I have here, and I'm going to just kind of scroll through them real quick, is some antique hand-pieced or vintage, whatever you guys want to call it, um, hand-pieced blocks. They're very sloppy. They haven't been ironed. They sewn are, hand, right? they were all sewn by hand. Yes, they are all hand-stitched. As you can see, that's all hand-stitching. So there were 32 blocks, right? Yeah, there's, I need to make seven more. 
to have six across by seven down so that I can have a big enough quilt out of all these. So I'm going to replicate these blocks because not only did I get these blocks, yeah, I got the purple fabric also, which there was another chunk, which I cut here. So this big, huge chunk, I think is already pieced to be the back. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, I will do whatever I need to do to fix it all up. But all these blocks are hand pieced and I'm going to send these over to Iron Man because he is going to be pressing these today while kind of keeping up with comments. It's going to be a little hard today because I'm replicating these blocks with three and a half inch squares of the background color that's in these blocks. And then I went through all that fabric that was behind the camera and pulled out everything that reads the era that these were from about. I don't know. They just look old. They feel old. Some of them are like polyester. There's definitely some old blocks here. They are also sun faded, if you guys haven't noticed when I'm pulling them down like this. Wherever these were sitting, they were sitting in a window with sunlight directly on them. So they were getting sun faded. I'm just going to put this together even with the sun fading because I honestly have never really been bothered by that kind of stuff. It's a vintage quilt anyway that's coming out of this with a little bit of modernness because I'm I'm not hand sewing no more blocks. They're getting sewn by machine. So I pulled out and cut four and a half inch squares so that I could make the hourglasses for this. So I have this, a couple pieces one to three pieces of each of these fabrics that I'm going to be holding up like this one. I only grabbed one of and I cut these from scraps anyway. So they were either small scraps or not enough of the size of that fabric to get what I needed from it. So most of them there's two of, but there's a couple that have three and there's a couple that are just one. But all of these I'm going to pair up and turn into hourglasses. I probably overcut, but that's okay. I'm just gonna turn these into hourglasses and make myself some blocks just like those. And then all those, once they're pressed, I will be trimming all those blocks up to match the size of my block. Even though the fabric, I measured it, hand-pieced or not, I measured it. It's um, definitely not, you know, is it stop working? Oh. Uh, my blocks are going to turn out a little bit different because some of those have half inch seams. Like they're definitely not quarter inch hand sewn seams. So I'll just trim them down to match the size of my blocks. And if it looks funky, it looks funky. It's not meant to be perfect because I, again, I'm using somebody else's what they didn't want stuff. So these are the fabrics I will be using. You want me to get the other computer for you? No. Oh. Well, I can't do that if you don't have that open. Okay. So this is what I will be doing, is making some hourglasses. And I'll tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Because I want these to finish at uh, three and a half inches, which is the size of my purples. So I'm going to be drawing a line, sewing corner to corner. I mean, sewing on each side of that and then cutting it and then using the two pieces back together again the opposite way, but I'll show you that. So what are the questions, Mr. Scotty? I've been quilting for six years. What got me started is I was in my wheelchair and I had nothing else better to do. I couldn't ride my motorcycle no more. I saw a quilt on the, I saw a quilt on somewhere on the internet, I to this day cannot remember where, but I saw a quilt and said, hey, I could do that, and I made one. And I took sheets, and that's how I got started. So I'm just doing some of these up. And one side at a time for now is what I'm gonna do. And then I'll run them all through. And then I will start so on the opposite side, oops, why didn't I draw a line? I shouldn't have to draw a line. I am not drawing lines. That's so much easier. 
<laughs> I'm just, I have seam tape, so it's a little bit easier. These are four and a half inches. My starting pieces are four and a half inches. I want them to end at three and a half inches. So I gave two one inch seams amount worth just because to make hourglasses. I may have to trim them, but I'd rather trim than them not be the right size. So. Long. Yep, and I didn't want to chop anything up. I'm kind of against chopping up vintage quilt stuff. Um, I would definitely prefer to just finish the project if it's unfinished or if it's just a top, I will quilt it and take beautiful care of it. And then it'd just be another actually in use vintage top. <laughs> I really don't like putting it to waste. And I have no idea who made it. I do know that the person that did start this is deceased because it came from a lady who was able to tell me that, you know, she passed away and this was, a, it was a pile of um, scraps that she gave me along with this started project. I just like to have fun and create. So if it is finishing someone else's started project, that's what I'll do, no matter the era it came from. <laughs> Unless it's unsewable, then, then I won't try because I don't want to ruin anything. But this should all be sewable still. And then all these fabrics, they... This is the oldest looking fabric that was in that stack. And I'm pretty sure this is probably from like 1980. So it kind of blends well with all those um, squares. And then I'm just going to, I don't know if I'm going to sash it. I could pull from my vintage fabric. I do have a stack of vintage fabric, a big stack, and I have more in the garage. But the ones I do have in here bolted up, I will probably pull from that. Maybe something that goes with this purple and sash all these kind of just to make it a little bit bigger and then this maybe if it's not big enough then i'll probably use it on the back and then just border it out to make it bigger so it'd be a two-sided quilt Are you to no i am sewing to the side of it like if if you were gonna draw a line from corner to corner and sew on each side the two at a time half square triangles that's what i'm doing but i'm not drawing the line i'm just using my seam tape Huh? Seam tape, you mean? Oh, I don't have batting tape, but I am using seam tape. It's a tape that looks like, and I even cleaned this drawer up, like literally cleaned it up. It's a tape that looks like this, and you put it at your machine. The red line indicates your corner to corner for your center, and to each side is a quarter inch away so that you can line your blocks up a quarter inch on that quarter inch line all the way to the needle or you can line your corner to corner and never need to draw a line ever again, which is a lot better. <laughs> and then I always forget that I can sew from corner, you know, from side to side. And I still end up drawing lines. If I need precision, I'll draw a line. Some of these do not go together and I am putting them together. <laughs> Because that's what those blocks, the, those fabrics do not go together. And I'm putting them together just like that. And I'm going to have fun doing it. As you can tell. Yep, sewing on each side of the center, and then I will cut them in half and then press them open and put them together and sew on each side of the center again, because you'll see when I get to it, because I'm making hourglasses, so. So 
sometimes I'm super glad when people send me scraps because it gave me enough scrap fabric of this older look that that those pieces had to make like the perfect blocks. Because I'm lining the corner to corner up with my quarter inch line, not the red line, but the black line to one side. And I'm not even sure I cut enough four and a half inch squares here, but we'll see. I need enough for seven blocks. And if I make too much, then oh well, it can go on the back <laughs> or something. I don't know. It could just go on a pile of I had too many. And some of them are mix mixed up. So there's like four different colors. So I'll mix purposely mix up a couple of these. A quilt that's already made yeah, I guess. that's over 80 years old. Um, I don't know. There's very few people that repair old quilts that are already made. Um, a lot of people I know that turn the quilt uh, at, into the batting and just re reproduce the same kind of top in the same kind of colorways, and then use the old quilt as the batting. I've seen that. There are some vintage quilts that are beyond repair, so. Oh, don't, hold on. You need this to sit on it for now, so that it doesn't overheat. That's why I have it sitting way off on the side. Just put it on this. That's why I have it sitting way off on the side. It's gonna still heat up. This gets air though. It gets air sitting way off on the side. Now I'm going to have to sit it. So that's one thing you can do. The other is, I don't know, it, start ripping the whole thing apart. Patch it, maybe. What? How pray tell you want me to iron this? This is so. You have to pull them and then just iron. It's very hard. They're very hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Give me two seconds to sew these two, these last pieces. Like I said, I hope I made enough cuts. My brain wasn't counting. I was just cutting while watching Plus, Teresa. Really it's fine. I'm going to still use them. It's still going in the quilt. That twenty of those have that. All right, turn the whole thing around and sew the opposite side. Okay, well, there's that. Do you want me to give you a quick tip on how to do that? No, that one's beyond repair. No, it's not. Well, then you do that one. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the microphone, guys. Right here. I don't know what that spray is. Starch. Oh, you never let me use the starch. I like the starch. I like the smell. You don't like the smell. So see how it made that corner? Just like messed it up a little. Just starch them. If it doesn't lay perfectly flat, I'm going to be quilting it anyway, so. It's obviously not going to. Look at it. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's as flat as it's going to get. And then let it just sit right here. Stack them up right there. All right. Now to sew the opposite sides. How are these purple so faded? No, they were, that's how they came to me, was uh -huh. faded.
I'm just sewing these steel on the opposite side. Some of them have flipped, so I gotta flip them back around so that I can make sure that I'm on the opposite side of the line that is invisibly there. Because <laughs> I don't didn't draw the line. And I'm just following the corner along the line on my seam tape. Ever since I got this seam tape, let me tell you, it is highly important for me now to have it because I can't sew a straight line for the life of me. Oh, they're vintage blocks that somebody started and hand sewed them all. They're all vintage and they're faded and they're ruined and they're sewn pretty sloppily, honestly. I mean, I, I hate to judge another quilter's work, but this is, these are pretty sloppy. They're ugly. I'll say it. Yeah, these are super sloppy. It was probably a really old lady who decided she wanted to start quilting. I mean, you know. Be like my mom, I can't see. Yeah, it could be like Scott's mom, I can't see. <laughs> oh, come on. Hate when this happens. Try to pull that out. Did I roll another bobbin? No, I did not, but I'll use. Yes, Becca, they're all hand sewn. Yep, it's all hand sewn stuff. Yeah, I'm not using that. I'm gonna. I'm doing my best to iron them to make them look nicer. All right, guys, I gotta roll two bobbins real quick just so that I have enough because I did not do that before going live. Uh, no, my son has it. My older son, who's 21, Damon, he has the first quilt I made. But I still have the second quilt I made, and it is ugly. Talk about those seams being bad. Mine, absolutely worse. I didn't know there was such thing as a quarter-inch seam. I thought you just sew, and then open it up and sew some more, and then open it up and sew some more. I didn't know anything back then. I can't say but back it's then. Betty it's not. Boop and it looks good. Yeah, but it's a Betty Boop quilt. It looks good. And it has applique even. And I didn't even know applique. Well, I didn't know there was a name for what I did. I just, you know, cut out some fabric in the letters and put it on there. And if you guys remind me in about 20, 30 minutes, I'll uh, get it and show you. I don't mind sharing my ugly quilt so you guys can see. <laughs> It's perfect though. It it's fallen apart a few times, <laughs> but again, I didn't know. I didn't know how to bind. I didn't know how nothing. Tell me, yes, this was all given to you. Yes, this was given to me. Even these fabrics that I'm using to recreate the blocks was given to me. Yeah, my hand sewing. I'm surprised. My hand sewing, I think I've been meticulous about it, and that's why it takes me so long to do those blocks that I've been working on. Yeah, but, I can't judge. If I'd hand sew this, it would look 200 times worse. So this yeah. person did a great job. Yeah, it's a great job, but it's... Her hand sewn. <laughs> for what I'm trying to put together, it's sloppy because these all have to be pressed, and yeah, it's been a struggle because they're all folded over, and when I go to quilt it, I'm probably just going to stitch all these seams down because most of them are folding over. Yeah. Well, show them the back. The, they're like flipping and stuff. It's weird. But Oops. it's okay. We're going to make it work. Yep. Scotty's going to try to get them as flat as possible so Tiffy can trim them and sew them together. Flat. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be nice. All right, finish sewing where that ended off. And last one. That's weird. I just went to put my foot on the pedal and I tipped it upside down. <laughs> Oops. All right.
right, let's grab a disc guy and snip all these apart. You know, I learned a, a hack actually for those of you that have been wanting this, one of these things. So I don't have the right size piece, but I'm gonna give you guys a general idea. Take a seam ripper, these kind with the small little bottoms, like this. And then take the thing to your machine. This is the thing that goes up here like this and holds a spool of thread from coming up. Take this, put this little seam ripper in here. Mine's not big enough, but they have bigger ones. We'll put it on this side for now because it fits on this side. And bam, look. My seam ripper sucks, but this is an old seam ripper. But look, you have a little cutter just like this. I was watching a video the other day and this guy just, it was a, a guy sewing and he just like, oh, it's time to use my seam ripper. This is a really cheesy seam ripper, but yeah, do that. These little cap things that go up here. Yeah, it barely takes any water. Great bottle. Nothing. Yeah. Full already. Like, don't even think I can... Yeah, it's because it has a, it has a, whatchamacallit in it. Um, a, I don't know what it's called. Becca knows what it's called, don't you, Becca? The darn thing that's in the spray bottle. In, in this fine. spray bottle, it has that plastic thing, so it mists when you just hold the handle down once. Uh, you guys know what that's called. I don't, because my brain can't think of it. All right, now to cut from corner to corner on all of these. A bladder. A bladder, that's the word, thank you. Speaking of, I should have emptied my bladder. <laughs> Where'd you get your thread cutter from? My thread cutter was gifted to me, but they can be found on um uh, Fat Quarter Shop has them. They look a little bit different and, well, everywhere sells these things. This one's called the Cutting Gizmo by the Gypsy Quilter. So you just type that in and maybe you can find it on Amazon even. Type it into Google. I always googly search everything. That's my go-to way to find stuff is Google. And if Google don't have the answer, then I guess it doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm hoping this looks cute, adding these to it. Because there's, I need to make seven blocks, so I'm gonna add one of my blocks to each row. <laughs> that way they're nicely scattered all the way through this quilt. But I'm trying not to let anything go to waste. <laughs> oh, to be cut. I'm going to trim them all anyway, yeah. depending on the size this comes out. <sighs> so I'm assuming all of you that are here are ignoring football today. The Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know who's in the Super Bowl. I know something about Ohio. That's it. And the other one, I don't know. But that's only because Stephanie from Stephanie Stitches, she said it was an Ohio team. I don't know what part of Ohio the team is from, but I don't know. No, I'm just going to leave them the way they are. <laughs> I really am. I'm just going to leave it all and just go with it. All right. So these are going to get pressed. Can you press these two real quick so I could show the next step?
And then we're going to press the rest of these. Stack them up for you. Yeah, can I press those? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, so start it out with four and a half inch square. Squares, Press plural. The green side. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. As long as both of the same ones are pressed to the same color. So both of these could go to this, both of those could go to yeah. that. Yeah. Come on, me. I put them all. All right. So the next step when they are pressed, make sure that you press both pieces to the same side. So that way, both of these are pressed towards the green. So that when you put them opposite sides like this, the seams in the center are going to nest. And usually people pin at this step. Again, I don't pin and I don't mind if these turn out sloppy because they'll kind of match with the quilt and it won't look like I added any actual machine piece blocks to it. So <laughs> they are right sides together. He thinks his curling comes on in 30 minutes. <laughs> um, they're right sides together and I have nested that center. So now I'm going to have my imaginary line, but if you need to draw a line from corner to corner, like this, once they're right sides together, they should be the same exact size if you sewed a consistent quarter inch seam on both sides. My line is drawn, and now what I'm going to do is sew on both sides of that line. And I should end up with a block that's close enough to three and a half inches. So I sewed on both sides of the line. Yeah. So now, when I open it up, I have little hourglass blocks. Done the two at a time method. So these come out to be. I'd help if I had my ruler in the right direction. Direction. Th almost three and a half and almost three and a half. So I'm going to trim these down to three and a half using my bigger ruler here with the block closed on the seam in the center like that. And then I'm going to line up my three and a half inch and three and a half inch uh, markings on my ruler on my seam line. I know. I wish I could show you guys this up close, but I'm on my phone today. <laughs> but I've shown you this before. All right, just like that. And now when I open it up, yes, it's a three and a half inch half uh, quarter square triangle or hourglass block. So that is that. So then they can go to Scott to be pressed. I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to. Use this line for reference right here. So there's my 45 degree line that starts at the tip. I'm going to line that up on the tip right here on the seam that goes hey, across so just like this. And then I'm going to line my three and a half inch mark right here and my three and a half inch mark right here on my seam line. So on the stitch. So I'm going to line that up because it's nice and straight. Make sure it's nice and tip. Put my three and a half inch marks here. I always usually trim like this or I use some kind of thing. I When I started cutting blocks as a square opening, you know, pressing them and then cutting them, it was way too much of a hassle. So now when I do blocks like this, I always just leave them folded in half and use the bigger ruler. So now I have another three and a half inch square. So there's two. So let's grab two more. Yeah, I ironed that oh. one. Yeah. So we're going to do the same thing. All right. Again, I'm going to take these right sides together with this onto that side and that bottom onto this side, just like this. Nice teachable moment for you guys. I'm going to nest that seam in the middle. If you want to put pins when you make blocks like this, by golly, pin it, pin it up. But then I'm going to hold it sideways like this. Both my corners are matching beautifully. You draw a line like this from corner to corner. 
and then sew on both sides of that line. And you'll get two more blocks. I don't know what that means. Maybe it means it's 633. I don't know. And then split. Oh, oops, I need a bigger ruler for that. So I'm just going to line my ruler up again, a three and a half inch on my stitch line on both sides. And then I'm going to make sure that my center is nice and straight on that line and everything. It would be nice if my ruler was flat. That's cool. And that's that. That's that. Perfect in the corner, just like this. Split it, and I have a nice three and a half inch hourglass. So if I lay it on this ruler and hold it up for you guys to see, it lands on the three and a half inch mark both ways. Trim this next one. Come on, get the right way be nice if the ruler was right sides too because then everything would look good can't have an upside down ruler <laughs> um, so here's my other one oops right there just like that so i'm just going to continue doing this a couple of them i'm going to mix up so i'll just do this set right now and that set and this set three of them bam just like that they're getting mixed up so I'm just going to find the sides that they're pressed to and put them opposite of each other. And now I'm not drawing a line because honestly, I don't need to with my seam tape. Just like that. I'm going to put these two together. Let's see which way that seam is pressed. There we go. Tiffany, you have so much knowledge and I truly appreciate you sharing with all of us. I believe we can make something out of anything. Glad I found your channel. Thank you. Karen. Thank you, Karen. And the rest of all of them, I think I'll just, well, maybe I'll do it one more time because there's quite a few. I'll mix them up. Because, like I said, a couple of the bigger blocks are mixed up, but the rest of them are in an order. So now I'm going to sew on the other side of my invisible line. And yes, I sew like this all the time in fast pace for those that are new to my channel and aren't used to it. I should have probably named it Tiffany's Speeding Quilting Life. Speed Quilting Life. Yeah, that's what it should have been. Tiffany's Speed Quilting. Oh, and if you're new to my channel and don't know, I use a Juki TL 2010Q. That way you guys don't have to ask. And that seam flipped. It happens. I'm leaving it. I ain't fixing it. <laughs> um, it's a Juki TL 2010Q. And it's an amazing machine. You can find it at Sewing Machines Plus or many other retailers online that sell um, these machines. I am an affiliate for Sewing Machines Plus and for fat quarter shop connecting threads my local quilt shop and martelli notions which you can find in the description below every single one of my videos and if you're on a computer you can find on the main page up in the top right corner of the banner on my page there's some hover over or on the about me page you guys can find all my affiliate links doesn't cost you to use those links all it does is help my channel out ever so slightly and yeah that's it that's my spiel <laughs> my spiel yeah. i gave you my spiel just in case you needed to know now hopefully i don't need to repeat myself at all today <laughs> while i'm making my funky blocks hey so some of them are just getting mixed Yeah, there's toy. They're in industrial Toyota machines too. I saw those before. Well, at least they say Toyo on them. I was gonna assume that they're Toyota. 
because they're oh karen thank you thank you so much you know what that's gonna pay for me and scotty to have a valentine's date of getting fast food and eating at home <laughs> yeah, we don't go out on valentine's day we don't go out on valentine's day that's the worst day to go out where i live and this weekend was Winterfest in havasu so that means everybody was here this town has been a disaster they shut down main street for Winterfest. This, I, I mean, think it's no parking at any of the grocery stores. Yeah, though. there's no parking or anything. This, um, I think it's Wednesday is the pyrotechnic show. They have a like, I'm hoping I could. Weekend. I thought it was this weekend, this week, no. during the week. John's playing at it. Yeah, oh, at the he is. Next week. Oh, yes, where I when I won't be here. Yeah, yeah. well, I will be in Phoenix at QuiltCon. Sure he said it was next weekend. I could be wrong. Uh oh. I'll have to look again. To Either way, as soon as the pyrotechnic show, and if it's this coming weekend, not where we are now, but next weekend, I will be in Phoenix at QuiltCon. So for those of you that are going to QuiltCon, I will be there. I don't know how I'll be able to meet up with everybody. You're just going to have to find me because I don't know anything about the convention center. So I don't know to say, hey, meet me at this time on this date while you're there. You know what I mean? So... I will be there on the 19th and 20th, which is Saturday and Sunday. I will be with friends. Those friends you may be able to recognize as well if you, you know, know some of my friends. You've probably seen my friends on my channel before. So maybe you'll be able to either recognize me and them or both. So, and don't be afraid to come up to me at QuiltCon if you're going... Just come right up to me, but make sure you tell me your you. You can tell me your name, and then tell me your YouTube name, so I can put the face to the name, even though because I've never seen your guys' face before, so it makes it kind of weird. Um, are these cut? Yeah, no, these are the ones next. You can download the QuiltCon app, and it has a map of the convention center. Larry. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, could do that. Yes. And if you really, really want to, if you're going to QuiltCon and you know you are, how about this? Do you use Facebook Messenger? I do. Do you use Instagram Messenger? I do. Or email? I use that as well. All those links are in the description below. Contact me one of those ways and you could say where you are and maybe I could figure it out there, you know, like, oh, hey, now, okay, we're close now. You know what I mean? Well, Christy says everyone's going to make an HST necklace and you'll all be able to find each other. Yeah. She was paying attention from the other day. Yeah. That's right. That's pretty good. Yeah. Make ourselves some half square triangle lays. That way we can all have gotten laid. <laughs> Sorry. So it was, it's still funny. You need the necklace though to show them. You don't yeah. have the necklace on. If you guys caught last week's video, I made myself a lay out of half square triangles. And it was funny because I made some funny jokes to go along with it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I know. Was that last week's show Sunday or was that one of our during the week I don't remember. I think it was last week's show Sunday. All right, I have combined the matches and now to sew, I'm just going to nest my seams and sew on both sides and of my invisible line. You could always do like at the airports when you're waiting for somebody, Tiffany's Quilting Life and just hold a sign. Oh, hey! I know who you are. Come over, hang you're out. Be wearing your shirt one of the days, and the other day I don't know what you're wearing. So they'll yeah. Be well, I'll be wearing my quilting Tiffany's Quilting Life on Saturday. The shirt that says Tiffany's Quilting Life. The only one that I have that's starting to be like old looking and stained because <laughs> I wear it too much. But that's how you'll know the first day. The second day, I don't know what I'm gonna wear. You have 18 other quilt shirts. Where's the quilt? Yeah. That pencil don't go there. This pencil goes in there. That's my in there pencil. So, yeah, you'll know. You'll find me. I'm pretty sure you will. You know what I look like. I look the same on camera as I do off, except I'm off camera. I'm always wearing pajamas, and on camera, I'm wearing regular clothes. Well, mostly. I got business on the top and party on the bottom. <laughs> A lot of comments 
there. My Olaf party at that. Today is an Olaf party. Winter on my legs. It's beautiful and wonderful and feels amazing. Oh, was that a match? It was a match. Oh well. I think so. I think so too. Oh man. Um, well, now that is something I'm not 100% sure about because I would probably have to travel with Scott, but then Scott would be stuck in Texas being like, uh, this is boring. I want to go home. And he's stuck in Texas with me. That's why he's not going with me to this Phoenix thing because he's not, he doesn't know if he's going to have fun or not. He was bored within an hour of being at our local show. So <laughs> I'm just going with friends instead to make it a little easier. And if it, if I can handle the walk and all that kind of stuff, maybe, but I don't have the money to go to Houston right now or, and I am scared of flying. So that would be a drive because I don't fly at all whatsoever. So that one would have to be like super pre-planned for like, not this year. <laughs> if I ever did go. You know, just because. I mean, I've been to Texas, though. It's a beautiful state in some areas. <laughs> Not where we went. Oh, yeah. Scott has friends in Texas. That's right. He could just go hang out at his friend's house. Are they close to Houston? Scott also has not one but two of his closest friends that live in Phoenix. Also, that he could easily spend the whole weekend there. Well, and then. not have to worry about staying anywhere. So don't listen to some of the rhetoric. <laughs> All right, trimming these apart, and then I gotta, um, I gotta do this whatever to them. Trim them. That's the word. Dan and Mayor in Texas. Buddy. You know that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I would have to stay in Texas. That's right. I wouldn't even have to worry about hotels. Amazing. Obviously, yeah. Are they in Houston though? I don't exactly remember. <laughs> they were. They told us. Oh, I thought they said like Dallas or something. I, I don't know where any of those cities are. We didn't go to those areas when we went to they're Texas. Near, I think they're near the base. Where the base? <clears throat> Wherever the base is in Texas, then that's where our friends I are. I don't know. Because this is their house. Because Dan's getting out. I don't know. Yeah. If Dan there's... wants you to go visit a show in Australia. Yeah. If I could ever get there, if I had the money to go, let me tell you, I'll be there. <laughs> I would definitely go to Australia. Okay, Fort Hood's a few hours north of Houston. So that wouldn't be far. <coughs> uh, okay. Sorry for the coughing, guys. If that's where he's at, I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. When is the when is the Houston quilt show? You guys let me know. Maybe we can like look into it, me and Scott. As long as it's not like, you know. May would go with you. Yeah, May would go with me. You know she that. definitely would. I'd stay home with Dan. With the kids. Have you ever went to the Paducah Quilt Show? Nope. I've never been to any other shows than my local area. So even going to Phoenix is a first for me. I mean, I used to live in Phoenix. I know everything about Phoenix. And, you know, I used to live there, but. I haven't been there in, since the last time I had to go to a specialist down in Phoenix. I don't go very often. It's four hours away, so I don't go very often. I've been all over Arizona. But if I know about the future shows, that's my goal is to start going to shows and stuff. So I want to enter them, though. That's the thing. Sponsor? Like someone I'm staying with or something? I, I don't get it. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I have plenty of Australian fans. It just depends on who lives near a cult show. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're not allowed to fly to Australia? I don't know. 
I don't know. I just know that we can't ship to them right now. Yep, we can't ship to you. Oops. Come on. Play right where I want you. Stop moving, ruler. Probably would have been easier to not have an elongated ruler and to grab myself a square ruler for this part, but... These are the next pieces? Yep. These ones, too? Yeah, these are the ones that I need to put together. These are the ones that I haven't cut yet, and those are the ones I've cut. I've just been sticking in there. Again, I'm cutting these to three and a half, so I'm barely shaving off. You guys know that I wanted to get as close as I could to a three and a half inch um, square. So the North Texas Quilt Festival is in August in Dallas. North Texas. Okay, I'm just gonna have to like open like a the a quilt show calendar kind of thing. That's the last. Uh, Pam says. Uh, hi, she's still going through her fabric, but she's going to send you some when she's done. Oh, awesome. Thank you. The Houston Quilt Show is November 3rd. Oh! Well, we don't have one this year, so birthday. yeah, we could probably do that for my birthday. Go to Texas. I mean, that's the end of the year, so we have plenty of planning. We could probably do that because it's the day before my birthday. Because my birthday is November 4th for anybody that wanted to know. Uh, Donna wants to know, couldn't you use that ruler on the wall behind you? I probably could. I'm just too lazy, so I'm just using this long one. <laughs> I have a thing for my little Missouri Star rulers here. I love them. I'm invested in them. They treat me right. Angela says, I want to thank you for helping become a confident quilter. I'm doing my first pattern ever, like reading it and cutting. Oh, awesome. Uh, I'm using your method to go efficiently. That's awesome. I am so glad for you. I'm glad I'm inspiring you guys to get out there and create something and sew and get over fears of free motion quilting or long arm quilting or whatever it is I'm training you to do. <laughs> I'm just like glad that you guys all like to hang out with me. Yeah, you hit twenty-one thousand. Yeah, I hit twenty-one thousand. Like the was it yesterday or the day before? I, I don't know. It was a day or two ago. I don't know. It was yesterday or the day before? I don't know. No, I'm not doing a giveaway. I, I, I'm kind of keeping it to the big numbers and then the random ones in between. Whenever I feel like it. Whenever I feel like it. I did hope you guys caught my 25 patch block from this week that just went because it was a heart note for Valentine's Day tomorrow. That's the only Valentine's Day thing you will see from me. <laughs> I'm not doing any more heart stuff. I did make a heart project though last month, I think, just to see how it would look. And um, actually I could show you, oops, that goes over there. What am I doing? throwing things randomly all willy-nilly. Um, I did make a heart project and I was thinking about doing it for Valentine's Day, but now I don't have any more pink and red fabric because I used up all those scraps. I would have to go through and pluck out more pink and red fabric and the ones I used actually go together. All right, I'm gonna sew these together now. Oh, Mr. Scotty, you press these both different directions. I need them to be the same direction. Okay, well, I didn't, some of them went all yeah. together, so I forgot. Yeah, which so way flatten I went. I that it, back I out. It, I get it. While you're doing that, I'll, um. But they weren't all right next to each other because my file was. Do you have videos on free motioning quilting on a home machine? Yes, I do have a couple, but they're probably not named. So here's my Valentine's project that you guys get to see that I haven't even quilted yet. See if I can get it right. I just didn't do it for Valentine's Day. It's two and a half inch squares. And it's tone on tone. The white is tone on tone. And the rest is all scraps that were sent to me. Mixed with a little bit of my own stuff. And then I'm going to put, I have a heart fabric. Like, kind of like this. And I mitered the corners, by the way. You guys can see that. Of my fabric. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do that often with striped um, border big prints that are directional. I try to miter the corners so that way everything goes out in the side direction, you know, so it looks right. So that's my Valentine's Day project that I didn't even long arm quilt yet. I was going to quilt it with some hearts, but I haven't done it yet because, well, I'm behind and I have so many other things to do. And well, they're all loving it. Great so work. that is my little Valentine's project. I wanted a nice big heart and it's actually not completely square. It's actually slightly rectangled. So that's what I did for myself, I guess, for Valentine's Day. Just need to finish it, that's all. All right. I'm going to sew some more of these together. Uh, let's find these matches. I do. I'm actually, like, holding it. best as I can for now. I'm going to put a couple blocks together. That way they have the general idea. I don't know if I'll get them all together today. I do have a headache, you guys. I've been working since yesterday with a headache. It developed yesterday. I did that live. I thought it would go away when I went to bed last night, but I actually woke right back up with it this morning. So... And it's not really like a full-on migraine migraine, but it's a migraine at the same time. It's like a migraine headache. It's a, a little bit of mixture because my neck hurts. Yeah, I'm going to figure that one out. Uh, I have a, I'm going to be filming as well while I'm there. So I will figure out the live stream for my So Sunday that day. We'll see. You guys just have to look forward to whatever I come up with. Even if it's just me coming on with my friends to say hi, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I can hand sew in the car on the way home because I'm not driving. So at least I don't think I'm driving, which I wish I was because I don't like anybody else's driving but my own. I kind of want to sew some randoms again. Let's see what's left. Three sets left? Janet wants to know if no. I do not, but I do have a Facebook business page, but I don't have a web page. I update the Facebook business page as often as I can. Um, I'm trying to move things off of Etsy sooner or later so that everything can just be... Yeah, I have an Etsy shop and nobody really ever... I mean, some people, you guys visit it, obviously. Can you press this one to this dark? Flatten it back out. Put it on the other side. It, it is on the dark. Do you want to go to the lighter side? No, the it's... The blue is the darker side. I'll put it on oh. the other side. You say put it on the other side. Yes, it's put it on the other side. side. Thank you. Um, what was I going to say? I was saying something. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Um, something. I am making, I am recreating some uh, vintage blocks that are hand sewn. I need seven more blocks to make a six across by seven down quilt. That was my goal with these because I wanted it a little bit bigger than what it was. And I figured, why not add a little bit of me to whomever made these blocks and create something with it oh because you should have pressed it flat first it did oh i don't know then just give it to me i'll sew it however um yeah so i'm trying to re no okay tell them we still have stuff on etsy i still have stuff on etsy i just don't use it we're supposedly going to be putting more on this week hopefully yeah our etsy site is Quite small. We only have five quilts on there, but we have a lot more. 
for sale that aren't on there that we will hopefully be putting more on this week. Yeah. If you guys are interested in any, you can just message us. Yeah, if you're interested in any of my quilts, just message me. You get a better deal anyway than getting taxed off of Etsy for all sorts of things. And then I and get... You give 10% off the Etsy price. I get fees taken out and like crazy too. So I barely make any money off of the quilts, which kind of sucks because I put a lot into them. So if you guys are ever interested, just message me directly for quilts. It's easier that way. And all that stuff that I just mentioned can be found in the description below every single video and on my About Me page. last ones i just need to trim them apart and trim them down to three and a half but before i do that i'm going to trim them in half real quick first but ow that hurt yeah probably <laughs> yeah Definitely. Yes, their name. I know what they were. I'm just saying it was funny. <laughs> some of them are pretty funny. Yep, some of the trolls are pretty funny, guys. Funny sayings. That was funny. There's the ones that say nasty stuff, but then there's the ones that say funny stuff. And whatever. It was funny. We just get rid of them anyway. I know. I deleted it. Okay. Are you kidding me? There we go. And last one. All right. So let me, before I trim all those down, I am going to make a couple blocks. So I'm going to take a couple, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to take five. Do that one of these like this, and I am going to lay them like this right here. And then I'm gonna take four of these purples and lay them in between. I'm gonna put this guy there, that guy there. And my dog ears are still on these from after trimming, I didn't trim those off. I'm just gonna leave them. So, what I'm gonna do is make a nine patch. Like to hold this up to the camera to make it easier. I don't know what I made this little like design thingy, like a design board, and I don't know what I did with it. It's probably still out in the garage with all my junk. All right, so I'm making this right here. It's a nine patch. So I'm gonna sew these two together, those two together, those two together, leave it on the machine break thread when I get to the bottom and then come back to the top and press this open right here and add this, this, and that. That's how I'm gonna put it together. So, just gonna lay this right here temporarily so that you can see. These, these ones? 
Yeah, and it'll go with the blocks that are already made. So one, and I don't care which way the hourglasses are facing. Honestly, I don't. Two, and three, I'm gonna turn this one because there was, a, I also, the pieces that were um, in the extra pile of the background fabric had already been uh, sewn. <laughs> so I'm gonna press this towards the purple. So towards the purple and towards in, just like that. I'm gonna grab the third, stick it on here, sew it on. Grab the next, sew it on. And the last one. And so it on. I think all my little hourglasses are facing different ways, which is perfectly fine. Again, I'm going to press in towards the purple, out towards the purple, and in towards the purple. And so now I have this. Just going to take the two, sew them together. I'm going to nest these seams. I'm not really going to care too much if it doesn't because, again, this is going with vintage blocks that don't match at all. So I'm just kind of doing my sloppiest piecing so that it all looks like it's the same as where those other ones came from. Uh, when I quilt it? Probably, yes. Yeah, it's fine. It's just going to get mixed up. I'm sewing the opposite side on now. And just no like this. To make that lump. See that lump? There's no yeah. light. That's a big lump. Yep. Just like that. I now have this block. And mine compared to those are, let me have a flat one right here. A flattish one. <laughs> Let's see the difference in mine compared to their size. Oh, it's not that bad. It's off about, but all those blocks were different sizes. So I'm going to be cutting the big ones. There's the, the person that did these down, but they're all going to be to the size that mine are. So that's the block. So that was whoever pieced these, and these are mine. Obviously, it's not flat. It needs to be ironed. But as soon as it's ironed, I'll have the size that my seven come out. And then the rest of these will all get trimmed to that after Scott presses them. So let's make a couple more. This needs to be pressed. That's just mine anyway. Put this over here in the pile. Just let it fold in, like iron a fold into it, and then I'll quilt it down. <clears throat> All right, so again, I'm going to grab one, two, three, four, and let's grab this one, five, just like that. And then... One here, there, there, and there. So four of those, and I'm again do the same exact thing. Just going to piece these together. Actually, I'm going the opposite direction, but whatever, it's fine. As long as they all get put together the same way, that's all that matters. And again, I left the dog ears on because I could care less. Press that in, out, and in. I'm going to add this, that, and that. It's going to turn around because I went the opposite way first. And you guys, I'm not using my seam guide, it's a miracle. Because again, I'm not trying to be purposely 
like super sloppy with my quarter inch seam, but I am trying to replicate the other blocks as best as possible. It is easy. I don't make it look easy. It is easy. Oh. So whatever I have an amount of here, I'll make into these. The rest of all this, oh shoot, I wanted to mix some more colors and I think, I guess I'll have to trim a couple more so that I have a more variety of color to mix up. Although not all of that person's blocks are, um, what's the word for it? Completely mixed up. Some have like three of the same in one. Finger pressing these for now because Scott's working on the other blocks that are having a hard time pressing. <laughs> oh, these don't line up at all. Look at that. Well, it's going to keep the look of this. Because you probably filled it too much. I don't know. Um, yep, something's wrong. Oh no, don't tell me it's broken in her eyes. It's pouring out. Look at that, it drenched the block. I don't know. I mean, I did get it from the thrift store. I like this one better than the other. Well, you want to use the cordless or the heavy duty? Yeah, I'm going to use that one. Oh, okay. He's going to grab the Proctor Select backup iron. <laughs> Our last backup iron. The last and final backup iron because this other one seems to be draining from the ironing plate. All, <laughs> of, the water All of the water just came out of the iron plate. It drenched the And block. these blocks it's need, drenched. they need <laughs> steam. So that's why we need water in the iron because the blocks need steam. It's they drenched. are very, very wrinkly. You like my wrinkly word? It's very wrinkly. They need help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that okay. I'll clean that up later. Not. Just leave it on the floor. Oh, he, he took out an iron and it decided to everything that was on the shelf the iron was actually like a book holder <laughs> and they all just came flying down all the magazines that becca just gave me <laughs> they all came tumbling down um while i'm here i, I know some of my moderators are some of my moderators are their own channels if they would like to put their links in, you guys can put your link in. And if any, if you guys are in the mood to put other channels links in that are here tonight, um, can you guys do that? Because that one I don't think works yeah. either. I don't know. It's just been sitting over yeah. there. The little knobby's off. Is it plugged in? You don't have it plugged in. No, obviously I don't have it plugged in. I'm saying the knobby. Oh. Oh well, cheap irons. There's always some. You can use the little Panasonic cordless. I mean, you just have to keep putting it back on the thing, just as if you were standing it up on another iron. I don't know how well that one works. We'll get her done. He doesn't like my heavy one, my heavy iron, my because of his hurt. wrist hurts. So he's kind of stuck having to use the lighter irons that I have. It's getting better, but I don't want to ruin it by screwing around with that over there.
Okay. I want to up there, right? For this game? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Super quick. Wow. Yeah, three and a half. I don't use water at all. I like steam. I like my blocks steamed because I don't use any extra, like I don't starch anything. And when I do, it's very rare. I don't, um, sometimes I use the spray bottle. Scott uses the spray bottle a lot, especially for blocks like this that are very troublesome. Spray bottle and starch. Uh, but I don't put wood blocks or any kind of after the fact, keep it, sit on there for a minute kind of thing. I don't do any of that stuff. So I use steam and it's okay because I have two layers of wool in my ironing on my big ironing board here. And it holds the seam really nicely. And 90% of my blocks come out super flat with steam. And I clean my own irons anyway. So if they did get clogged up or something, I clean them so they could be nice and clean <laughs> so that I can clog them all back up again with our hard water. The wheel guy, let's see how this one works. It's like the smallest iron yet. I think this is the part that takes the longest. Is... Yep, Heather, she says her ten dollar iron from Walmart this will last forever. That's what Tip gets. There. That's what this is. This Proctor $10. Select is the ten dollar Walmart iron. Ten dollar Walmart iron. My other yeah. one broke. I had two of those Proctor Select irons, but the other one broke. And then I that when the other one of those broke, this one, this Panasonic cordless one, was actually sent to me by Teresa McBrayer. She sent me this to try it out. And I actually loved it at first, but then I realized it's not staying hot very long. So, and I like to iron. I, I need an iron that's corded so that I can iron the whole entire quilt top. Jimmy says, I'm having all these problems. You sure you want me to touch the new one? Yeah. Don't worry, Jim. I'm using all the old ones. He's using all my old irons. Or what I call my backups. You know, in case of an emergency. <laughs> I usually use the backup ones anyway when I'm um, pressing on the long arm. Either the cordless or the backup corded ones for the steam. When there's a quilt loaded that really needs some pressing while it's on the iron because it's starting to shift like this will probably do. I'm hoping that having my blocks, the first position, second position, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way down, I'm hoping that having my blocks, because they're put together really nicely, that they will um, kind of stabilize each row, you know? Hopefully, we'll see. That way this thing doesn't shift and need to be ironed while it's on the long arm because I've had to do that several times. Oh, that black stuff. Water. Yeah. Wood. White. Oh, the right. white no. stuff. Press the, water. press the steam button like three Summer or water. you're dripping. Press yeah. the steam button like three or four times so that push it out. That's the water button. That one's steam. That oh. one's water. I know how to use an iron. I thought it was this, the water one. You want me to hit the water button? All right. Three more pieces to trim, and then Scott can press these, and I can start putting the last of what, however many blocks I was making. Like I said, I didn't um, count. I just started cutting four and a half inch squares for this from some fabrics that looked like they would go along with it because they look older uh this one has red stains all over it. just leave it it's gonna stay with red stains on it but the okay. other fabric no it's not stained look the other piece of that yellow has um blue on it look in your hand right in front of you see the blue, oh, the blue and the black, and the black. it's a, probably a spotted um like a spray spot a paint splatter striped fabric oh well it looks like red stain nope it looks it's like it Looks like it, but it's not. Okay. 
The rest of that is ready to be trimmed. I'm going to toss all these little pieces. I guess while I wait for him to press all these other pieces, I could just trim off the dog ears of these. Okay. Heather wants to know she got a bunch of new t-shirts for a quilt and they're covered in dog hair. Would you wash them first? Oh, heck yeah. Wash the dog hair away. You will be quilting it in there. Wash them, wash them, wash them. I made sure that my client for the baby quilt, baby clothes quilt, washed all her baby clothes first before sending them. So just in case there wasn't little poop stains or something, <laughs> or puke stains on the clothes that I'm making the quilt out of. So it's nice and clean. Okay. The more they get used, the more they take the chance of dying. Confetti! There we go. All right, I'm going to lay some of these out. And then as soon as he gives me. What do you want? What do you want? You just gave me these iron here. I got five done already. Four. Just to keep up with that whole look, we're going to put two of the same ones in it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to lay a block out. So I made two. So this will be block three. Don't make sure I oh, <laughs> I just saw what I did. I turned the half square triangle back into a half square triangle okay. because I felt for and I was feeling for the seam allowance, so they must have been pressed the same way, and I was like rushing them. Oh well. My mess up will end up in Okay, could you use a light interfacing to put on the vintage block? Uh I could, but I'm not going to. Oh, Heather's here. She forgot what day it was. <laughs> That's all right, Heather. Four one. Heather, you're gonna have to keep us posted whenever you all let us ship to you again. Three and three. All these have three now. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. And one, two, three, four. There's three more. Hi, Mom. Alright, what am I got? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I am making blocks to reprodu reproduce what I got given to me. You're finishing up vintage. I'm vintage. I'm. I'm recreating vintage blocks that were given to me and finishing up a quilt out of the vintage blocks mixed with seven of my own. 
six, seven. Okay, one, two. Here's the blocks that were given. You can copy in those. Three, and four, five, six. No, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, Hello, four, five. <laughs> yes, it is. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Okay. Let's do the same ones right here. Right there. Just like that. One, two, three, and four blocks left. I really don't care where they land. But I'm going to keep track of one, two, three, four, and five. I'm counting to make sure there's five in each stack because I already made two blocks. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, I'm going to pull these out because they got ruined. How about that? Replace it with that. Where did I put the other one? You have five left over Right there. there. That okay. there. Okay. Five left. I want to see what they are before I start sewing these. Okay, well, here's three of them. Oh, I like the flower one. That's just a different, Here's different, different. I'm not trying to be too picky, but I'm trying to mix it up. that there and that should be it right okay there should be five in each stack two three four and five two three four five well there's a question One, two, is your mommy going to penis no not that I know of because I think she they're and her. <laughs> I think they're actually going to Tucson for the weekend. So I don't know. I told her to sneak away from Matt. And come hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that should be five in each pile. Like I said, I overcut, but that's Don't okay. Oh, I know it. All right. I'm gonna put my seam guide on here. I'm gonna take all of these. Well, they're, they're really after your mom, no. Right? My mom likes every craft. I'm gonna say that out loud. One. Two. And. Three. Repeat. And hey. he's like, Hey, I got one block flat. Sweet. <laughs> he's over there talking to himself about the not so very flat blocks because <laughs> they're so wrinkled and messed up
zone here. And then I'll have made all of my seven blocks to fill in for this quilt. And that way it doesn't have to sit behind me no more collecting dust. Which, speaking of dust, this room gets so dusty that I went to pull out, I was going to do my snail trail blocks. I'm going to show you guys something. I keep my snail trail blocks under here because I was able to like just grab them and sew. But unfortunately, just move that. Look at this. I'm going to show you how dusty it gets in here. This is Arizona. Look at my black fabric. Look at the dust. Do you see that? So now they have to be vacuumed. Yeah, I live with that. Yeah. Those are my snail trail blocks that are going to end up sooner or later snails at sea. But unfortunately, they're covered in dust. <laughs> so I yeah, can't do nothing with them right now. I didn't want to sow dust. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just repeating this whole process now by grabbing the next ones in order. And I'm kind of finger pressing as I go, just a quick finger press and sewing them. So in sets of three, so every time I get to the third one, I grab from the top again. Although these blocks, it really doesn't matter because they're getting mixed around. As long as the purple is in the same place every time, the rest of it for this quilt really don't matter. Yeah, well, I don't breathe the stuff that's under there. I breathe what's up here, which is still tons of dust and does make me cough. Back to the top. Snails right now. Yeah. yeah. They are definitely desert snails. No, it's not going to get the dust. We're going to vacuum it. <laughs> We're going to vacuum it. It already would have been done vacuum. Coulda, shoulda, didn't. It's okay. Be done another day. I'm not too worried. I want to get this done. All right, three more so on, and then I'm gonna split this sets of three and start sewing them the three sets, the five sets of three that I have here together. Huh? Not these, no, these are next. So you could start with these two, the whole blocks that I made. Oh, yeah, let's sit down for a minute. No big deal. All right, so one, two, three, snip, snip, just like that. One, two, three, snip, snip, just like that. Snip, 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 snip. So now all five sets are just ready for me to finger press towards the purple on every single block, put them together. Well, they would have been in a project bag, but I didn't have any bags at the time, and I haven't bagged them since. So, at least the bottom bo blocks that could be sewn aren't covered in dust, just the tops, because that's the basket that's on the top. The under basket has no dust in it, which is all the pieces for the box, because they're all pre, um, they're all pre-cut every piece for it. Right. 
two more times and then flip them around. I probably won't get to putting this together this time around, but at least the blocks will have been made and then the rest just need to be pressed. And the whole thing, I'm going to, I think I'm going to choose a sashing. I really do. I think I'm just going to sash them so that way each individual block holds itself. And I'm not trying to nest, match these together because those are not going to nest or match together. So I think I'm going to choose from my stash of vintage fabrics and make and create a border. I'll use some of this right here to create the first border and then you um, some more fabric for a second border. That way the stretching will be under control because I really don't want to add anything else to these. So I'm not, I don't need interfacing on them because they're already sloppy. So I don't want to glue anything onto them, make it worse and then have it permanent. So I'm just going to leave them as they are as flat as we could get them. And it'll be wonderful once it's quilted. Yeah, this is a lot easier than one at a time. Just get them to the stage, them all to the same stage at the same time. Just keep going. This is what I usually do when I'm alone. Sometimes during my live streams, I do one block at a time, but that's because I'm showing you guys how to do something. But 90% of the time I chain piece. I find it a lot easier. Even with harder, complicated blocks, if you lay all the pieces out in a certain direction and piece all the certain sections at the same time and keep putting them back, then it's still the same thing. You're still multi-doing it. Just make sure that you, you know, arranged your colors properly and then just stack everything up and go, you know? That stacking takes less time than it does to sew each individual block by itself. You just stack everything up and then sew all those sections or all that piece or, you know what I mean? It goes a little bit quicker. And if you only have a half an hour to sew every day, this is the kind of thing that you should do. <laughs> or try. You don't have to do it. Just try it. See how it works out. You can get a lot more done. If you only have an hour a week, try it. You know what I mean? Just... All right, so here are seven blocks that I have made to go with the vintage blocks. Made exactly the same way, just not hand pieced. Because I don't hand sew. I have one quilt in the making that's hand sewed and that's it. So I will probably never hand sew or quilt, because I'm going to hand quilt that quilt too when I finally ever get to it. I will probably never do it after that time. That'll be, that's going to be the only one I ever make and I'll keep it for myself because it's the only one I've ever done. Because <laughs> I took a lot of time on that thing so far. All right, last one that makes seven total. And I did have a boo-boo block, which is fine because I overcut and I hung, <laughs> they were pressed the same way and I didn't even pay attention. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares left, plus these that would need nine. So I overcut just a little bit. That's okay. There's these. I still have some squares. Again, I just cut these because, well, I really wasn't paying attention. And then this extra fabric, I'm going to look because I think that probably she maybe cut it for to have as a back, maybe. I don't know. It's it's hand sewn down the center too. So I'm just going to use it for border and some of the backing, I think. 
probably take that bottom section off and make it border. So whatever was going on here. <laughs> I will figure it out and I'm pretty sure I'm going to sash these blocks. I'm going to find something that goes with this color purple for the border and sashing. All right, put those there. I got those. These haven't been pressed yet, but here are what the originals look like. They're hand piece. They're getting pressed. You can see all that hand stitching. Yeah. And then here's my block. You can see the difference in size ever so slightly on some ends. They're way bigger. So I will be trimming all these after they're pressed to match the size of mine. But other than that, I don't really have that much work to do. But I really think the sashing idea is a great idea, having sashing between them. And even cornerstones, maybe, just to spice it up. But I don't know if I want to add that much extra work. But that's it. Let me go grab that quilt real quick to show you guys my second ever quilt. I'm telling you, it was the worst thing in the whole wide world, but guess what? It's still usable to this day. So for those of you that are afraid to start quilting, don't be, because six years ago, almost seven, this is how I made things. So before I even knew that there was applique, I cut out letters, and this is t-shirt material. This is stretch, like what I'm wearing right now. That's what that is. And it's got big chunks of, and then it's got gingham mixed in. And I didn't know how to bind. It's been repaired so many times. Here is the binding. You can see, I didn't know what I was doing. It was decorative. I decorative stitched it all the way around. Like that. And I don't remember how I even did it. It's got little rips and tears, but you can see that I've had to go and repair it several times. I didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. But this was a sheet, one of my kids' sheets. They didn't use twin beds anymore. They had, a, by the time I made this, they had full size beds. But you can see I've had to go and repair it several times. And then I put the love on with a heart stitch. I didn't know what I was doing. And yeah, you can see it's got wrinkles and. Yeah, the stitch around the hearts, our hearts, oh, no around the, the love. I've never noticed that, even though yeah. I used to be on the floor playing on it. Which is it. But this is I it. So that. don't be scared to try your first quilt. If all you have is old sheets and old clothes, try it out. Sew them. You know, just, just to make your first quilt. This thing is still usable. It's actually quite thin. It does have cotton batting in it, so it's nice and, I mean, look at how flowy that is. This is still flowy to this day, you know. And this is actually quilted like every, I don't know, I don't even think I did to the recommended batting thing because we just bought me some batting and I, and a bag and I was like, oh, hey, that's fun. Okay, let's try it. And yeah, that's what I did for the first few quilts. Said you label it. Yeah, uh, no, it doesn't need a label. It's going to be in my house because it's so ugly. It could stay here forever. But that's the first quilt. When it comes to quilting, don't be afraid to try. Ooh. Thank you. I love the 25 patch blocks too. And it's almost over, guys. <laughs> almost over. We're going to 90 blocks on that. But with this being said, don't be scared. Just jump right in. Don't be scared to take somebody else's. This is mine right now, but don't be scared to take someone. Just sew them. If you don't want to do it by hand, do it by machine, because that's what I'm doing. The rest of this whole entire thing is being done by machine. Which one? I didn't know you took one off of Etsy. That one right there, baby triangles. We can do it another day. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll do it another day. Right now it's too much. All right. That's it, guys. That's all I got for today. I'm just going to, even off camera, when I feel like it, I'm going to finish pressing all those other blocks. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, 
I didn't know it was right here. I was going to yeah. go in the room and get it. <laughs> it's been here this whole time. So have fun. Enjoy the rest of your day. I am going to get off of here and go enjoy the rest of my day sitting in bed with Scott. And we're going to watch The Vampire Diaries because I haven't feel like I haven't watched it. I feel like, no, we're going to do it. I have feel like I have not watched my, any episodes in like three days, four days. I feel like I'm behind. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to go do. Thank you guys. Yeah, I will show it. And even if I'm by, well, it, it'll probably be done before. Next Sunday, I won't even be here. I'll be at the quilt thing. So you guys won't see anything in here. You will see me somewhere out in the world. <laughs> But the rest of the time, yeah. Whew. But I'm going to go. Anybody have anything? Scott's typing. <laughs> He's tapping away. I hope everybody okay, has. The auction, so I, guess we're done. I hope you guys all have a wonderful Valentine's Day with those you love. Don't forget to give your family members. Beautiful. Your children, your grandpas, your grandmas, your cousins, your sisters, your brothers, your uncles, your moms, your dads. Don't forget to give them all a hug. Tell them you love them. Let that be known that they are all your Valentines. And I will see you guys sometime. Because <laughs> I don't know what next week's schedule is. So I'll see you guys. Love y'all. Bye.